I can either ask you just to convert 250 micrograms to grams, or This particular question, the worst I do is that's it. It's just a straight out conversion. Which number do you want to mess with? Which uh, question? Number three. Um, On page. On page one below. All right, let's go to page 112. We look at number three. Let's see how would we would solve that. First, I'll read it off the board, and then we'll draw it. So what do we know? A patient is prescribed 125 milligrams of carbamazepine, or CBZ. Okay. The label shows that the drug in the pharmacy has in stock. So we have it in suspension. That has a concentration of 100 milligrams every 5 ml or every teaspoon. Because we already know that teaspoons is 5 ml. So how many milliliters do I want? Okay. So let's go to the board. Okay. How did I write it down? 125 milligrams of the drug, and I have a suspension of 100 milligrams for 5 ml. I want to know how, many, uh, how much ml should I get. So let's, uh, just for laughs, since I always do it the other method, let's do uh, um, ratio method. So 125 milligrams for X ml, I don't know, 100 milligrams for 5 ml. Solve for x. So it would be x equals 5 times 125 over 100. Or uh, 125 over 20. So, when you do the math, what do you get? X equals what? 6.25. No. Remember, there's always two ways to do uh, to do an inversion. Okay. Okay. So now let's try a similar problem, but the other way around. We've been asking you for the smaller thing, how many small things go into a big thing. 
Now let's talk about how many big things can go to, how many small things that we can get out of a big thing, out of a big thing. So, um, how's this? Um, I have 25 grams. Kindly convert it to milligrams. So let's do a ratio. 25 grams to some unknown milligram. And then my grams to milligrams ratio. In one gram, how many milligrams do I have according to my chart? Thousand. And then now what do I have to do? Solve for x. 25,000, right, over 1, x equals 25,000 milligrams. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because in 25 grams, there's got to be 25,000 little itty bitty ones. Also, we can say 2.5 times 10 to the 4 that way. Let's see if all of it's yep, all of it's within view. So either way, whether you want to do a ratio or whether you just want to do uh, my version, which is you know uh, writing out what you know, what you don't know. Either way, this is bread and butter stuff. This is stuff that it's easy, but it's also easy to mess up. Let's hit another one. What about um, on page 132? Um, number uh, 14. Okay. Do number 14. Page 132. Yes. Okay. Let's look at that. Oopsies. Okay, and then I'll write down what I know or what I don't know on the board. So, number 14. A patient is to receive 7,000 units of heparin. Um, it's available in stock, and I'll make it like a label, of uh, 5,000 units per ml. Okay. Uh, now what do we want? They want, question mark. How many milliliters do I prepare? Okay, don't worry about on the handout that you obtain from your instructor indicate the correct volume or anything. Let's just solve the problem. Okay. So I wrote down, as I was reading it, we know we have 7,000 units I want to give to my patient. Heparin. Very dangerous. It's a blood thinner. Okay, we usually give it uh, for a multitude of reasons, and one of the main reasons is usually for um, any heart trouble, because what's easier to pump, water or molasses? Water. So heparin thins out your blood. Now, on the stock label, I created a little label for myself. This thing, heparin, only comes in 5,000 units per ml. But how much do I have to push? I don't know. So let's do, since we've been uh, doing ratios all, all day, I know that I have 5,000 units in one ml. I'm giving my patient 7,000 units. I don't know. Look familiar? Now what can I do? Solve for x. X is 7,000 times 1, all over 5,000 
x equals how much? I'm going to bring out my handy dandy calculator. 7,000 over 5,000, or 7 over 5, if you want to simplify it. 1.4 ml. If I was uh, pushing this heparin through what they call a heck block, I'd be pushing 1.4 cc's of it. So the answer is 1.4? Mm-hmm. And the question would be, what would you, the, uh, what syringe would you use? You'd use one of the smallest ones you could find. You wouldn't use a big one. It's a small one. Yeah, I got 1.4. Good. Did you do it this way? Uh, no. Did you do it the ratio way? I did it the ratio way. Number 13. Uh, I got 100,000 um, microgram. I don't know if that's the answer. Let's check number 13. Yeah, that. Okay. I'll write it on the board as I'm reading it. Where's this one? Number 13 on page 132 states, you have 480 ml of a solution. Solution, fancy name for uh, Kool-Aid. Solute but solvent equals solution. And it contains 8 grams of powder or juice. Okay? 480 ml of a solution. Eight grams. It's eight grams. Yes. Now, how many micrograms are in four ml? Hmm. I got hundred thousand. I got nine hundred sixty thousand. Well, we got, well, well, let's break this down first. So if we're going to keep with doing our ratio, let me put this up here. So how many micrograms that are in 4 ml? This is tricky, but not really. So first thing we have to do is, that's, M, that's milliliters per gram. Or you can make it like this. Um, was it 480 milliliters? Mm -hmm. You can read it like this, 480 milliliters and equals uh, 8 grams. So, step one. Let me do a ratio. 8 grams, 480 ml equals to 4 ml and to how many grams? I could do that first. And if I do that first, 8 times 4, which is 32, equals uh, x over 480. So 8 times 4, 32 over 480. That's 0 0.0666, repeating. Uh, grams. Now, I have now, the first part of the problem has now how many grams in 4 ml? Is that what I want? Nope. I want micrograms. So, let's ask ourselves the second part. How many micrograms are in 0 0.666 repeating grams. So, do we have the do we have the first part? Did you figure out? Did you uh, understand how we got the first part? No. The first part we just did what? 
You got it in the format that they wanted. Weight over volume. Weight over volume. Weight over volume. Weight over volume. Made them equal. Make it like a ratio, right? And then solve for x. So now we know in 4 ml how many grams there has to be. And in 4 ml, there must be what? 0 0.0666 grams. Are we good here on how we figure that out? We just arranged the problem so it'll be easier to look at. So now that we know that I need this many grams, then it just has a step two problem. Okay. First look at the first part. You could see how I took all the information that was on um, the problem number 13 on page 132, and I did what? Grams to ml, grams to ml. Or um, weight to volume, weight to volume. And I did what? And I just made, I just made my ratio. And then now when I made my ratio, Cross multiply, 4 times 8 is 32, 480x, solve for x, 32 divided by 480, and that's the number we get. And does it make sense? Yes. 8 whole grams in 480 ml, when I only have 4 ml, it's got to be a small number. What I did is... Okay. Um, I... Convert eight gram to microgram. Okay, you can do that first. And I got eight thousand microgram. Then I do my math. Well, here's the problem. How many micrograms are in one gram? Not eight thousand. There's what? Eight million. Eight million. So you can do it that way. If you already did the conversion, that's another way you could do it. Instead of eight grams, that's eight million. Eight. So let's do the math. Sorry, I'm stepping in front of the camera, but I'm going to do the math here. 8 million times 4 equals x all over 480. Instead of this being grams, this would be micrograms. X equals, let's do 32, 32 million over 6,666.66 micrograms, or 66 six repeating. That's a lot, right? Yep. In 4 ml? Now remember, this is microgram. It's only 66,000 versus 8 million. Look at the ratio, 8 million to 480, and it's got to be something that's way smaller. 66 is... 66,000 is way smaller than 8 million. Mm -hmm. And when we check our math, it works. So yeah, you could do that. You could convert the 8 grams to 8 million uh, micrograms immediately. And do that that way. And it'll just be a one-step problem. But in reality, it's really a two-step problem. And how do we know that converts to that? If we look here, how do we know? I've got Gram is one one millionth of a micro one microgram is one one millionth of a gram. So for every gram, one gram, there should be how many micrograms? 
million in this. One with, with uh, six zeros. And that's how you get this. Okay. okay, so let's have a quiz on all these type of um, questions that we went over today. I'll look at the video, I'll create a quiz, and uh, look at the pages that we uh, went over for next week. And that'll be a nice quiz. And next week we'll continue, well not continue, we'll start with uh, chapter 8 on the items we were talking about today. But I would like to, for you guys to get um, this uh, um, conversion stuff down. Okay? And uh, I will also put conversion work okay, I have uh, for homework. Question. You convert that 8 million microgram, uh, the 8 gram to 8 million microgram, right? Mm -hmm. How did, How did you I do it? That you need to convert it in 8 million, then in 8,000. 8, because how do I know? I know that microgram is tiny. A gram is what? It's big. So I knew I know I need what? A million of these tiny things to make what? One gram. Or let's say you're just gonna do it purely mathematically. Eight grams, right? Uh well versus I don't know. Microgram. I know that there's what? A million micrograms? In one gram. Cross multiply. Eight million over one. Eight million micrograms. So, in a way, it could also be seen as a, a two-step problem. Okay? So, look at your homework. Uh, I believe it's homework five. I'll be posting it this afternoon. And it's going to be all this conversion type things. And it's, it's going to concentrate on kilogram to gram, milligram to gram, microgram to kilogram, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'll throw in a couple of volume stuff, too with milliliters to liters, microliters to liters, that kind of thing. Very simple, very straightforward, but you can easily see how it, how it can throw you for a loop if you don't understand this part right here. You don't understand this chart right here. That microgram is very small. Milligram is small, gram is small, but the kilogram is big. Alright, so be on the lookout for uh, homework to next week. And next week we will start uh, chapter 8, and that will be the, the items that we are supposed to go over today. Alrighty. Thank you very much. This is Dr. Grice signing off. Formula, right? Yeah. So we're on page 198, and some medications they they come in powder form, and they have to be reconstituted. Now, what's reconstituted means when you mix it, you, you got to mix it. You got to add you you got to add water. So the PV or powder volume is the final volume minus uh, the diluent. Now, or the diluting agent. And again, it could be water, it could be alcohol, it could be oil. So let's look at an example. So you have this antibiotic, has to be reconstituted. The label says that it is a dry powder that occupies 0 0.5 ml. Okay, using the formula for solving powder volume, Okay, determine the diluent volume with the amount of solvent or liquid that has to be added. Okay, so here's some examples. Okay, I'm gonna look at that, and uh, all I'd have to do is do what? 
just tell you what it is and you should be able to figure out that um, uh, the, the dial, uh, dial you went volume for a uh, 2ml final volume is 1.5. The dial volume for a 5ml is 4.5. Essentially, you're just, mo you're just minusing what? The dialing volume over, I mean minus whatever final volume you want to have. Now why do you do that? Think about it. The powder takes up a certain amount of space. Right? And a certain amount of space is what? Volume. So if you're doing a 5 cc, you're going to remove 0.5 cc's. If you're doing a 10 cc, you're going to remove 0.5 cc's because that is the space that's, that the powder is occupying. It's kind of weird because when we really usually think about powder, right? Think about something that's dry. You usually think about it in terms of um, of a weight, but in this particular case, it's kind of a little a little weird. You're gonna think of you're gonna think of the powder as like another fluid or another liquid that's taking up an equal amount of space. So those are pretty easy questions, and they can be also applied to. Um, um, apply to um, the, the, the techniques that we've been doing. Now, let's go over real quick. Let's let, let's get a this video that we can put. Good one, we'll put it. Because remember, this is extra outside of. Okay, let me. Okay, I'm going to put it on pause because I'm going to put this video up or something silly. Okay. Let me just adjust the height a little bit. Now, um, I put on pharmacy calculations for technicians, concentrations and dilutions by Professor Brad Wojcik. And we want to go over that first problem that he, goes to, that, that he went over. Essentially, the first problem that he goes over on the video is that he wants to make a 100 ml solution. This 100 ml solution that you want has to have a concentration of two milligrams per, for, per milliliter. Now the problem lies is that the stock solution only comes in 50 milligrams per ml. So this 50 milligrams per ml is a much higher concentration. So we have to do something to do what? Dilute it. And uh, Professor Wojcik talks about um, it doesn't matter how much water you have, it, ha it matters like uh, how much fish. Now his analogy, it just means that you're just dealing with the same bowl of water, which is 100 cc's. The only difference between what you're starting with and what you're going to end up with, and this is a dilution, right? The difference is that you are now doing what? You're, you are now adding more water or, another way to look at it is, goes, uh, you're adding less um, solute. So as you can see here, this is a solution, solute over solvent, solute over solvent, or the powder part versus the water part, or the dry part versus the wet part, whatever you want to look at. it. So the first thing that you got to do is, you have to, you have to uh, find out uh, how, it goes, um, how many milligrams your current concentration that you want. And we do it, um, 
Same method that we've been doing it for the last couple of weeks. 100 ml times uh, 2 milligrams per 1 ml. And the ml will cancel out. So what is our concentration? Our concentration is we need 200 milligrams. I need 200. I need 200 milligrams of drug in that 100 ml. Now the thing is, I have a stock solution of 50 milligram per ml. So, how much? How much should I use? How much of that stock solution am I going to put in? 100 cc bucket. So I start off with my 200. Fifty milligram for one ml. Two hundred divided by fifty. Four ml. And for the last and final part, what would I do? I would take four ml of that stock solution and put it where? In a 100 ml beaker, right? And then fill up the beaker to 100 ml. So I take 4 ml. So essentially, what am I doing? 4 ml of this 50 milligram stock solution, 50 milligram per ml stock solution, and then 96 milliliters to bring it all up to 100, because 100 minus 4 is 96. To say that again, I take 4 cc's or 4 ml of this 50 milligram stock solution, I put it in a 100 milliliter beaker, and then I add what? 96 ml, or I, I, I bring up the, the fluid line to the line that says 100 ml, mix it, and guess what? I now have um, a 50 milligram, I now have a 2 milligram per ml solution. I now dilute it. And that's what we're um, that's what they're doing. We're dealing with concentrations and how to dilute them, how to make it less. Because you don't want to give the patient 50 milligrams. I only want to give the patient what? Two milligrams per ml. Okay. And that is the worst I could do yet regarding so you concentrations. Four ml. To that to 100 ml, right? Yep. So essentially, I take 4 ml of this 50 milligram per ml solution, I put it in a beaker, and then to make 100, I add 96. Or you just put it in a 100 ml beaker because the beaker has lines and mm -hmm. it'll tell you, you know, why measure out 96? Just, you know, there's already 4 in there, just 4 on totals. To the 100 level mark, and that is a classic uh, concentration dilution problem. Okay. Okay. Let's see if I'm in frame. Okay. Now uh, this is off uh, the video. We just uh, uh, predisposed. Before we wanted a two milligram per uh, ml solution. Now I want to make 100 ml of a 10 milligram. So what am I doing? I'm bringing the concentration up. First thing I'm going to do, I start off with 100. hundred ml. ml's cancel out. 100 times 10. Now I have a thousand what? A thousand milligrams or one whole gram. Okay? So that's what I need to be in what? This 100 ml solution. But I have my stock solution is 50 milligrams. So again, I come down here, a thousand milligrams, and I set up my milligram. 
for one ml. Okay, how many ml do I do now? 100 over 5. Now I'm going to take how much of this stock solution? Now I'm going to take 20 ml and put it in 100 cc beaker. So essentially the recipe would be I take 20 ml of my stock and then I add what? 80 ml of water or solvent. And again where did That's you add the 80? Oh, okay. 100. Because you've got to make 100. If I'm already putting 20 cc's in a, in a cup that only holds 100, what's left? 80. Or you just fill it up to the 100 level line. And that's concentration dilutions, and that's the worst I can do here. And remember, it has two parts. You have to figure out what concentration or how much drug in milligrams you want and then you do what then you do a multiply or you put, make a ratio either way uh, the, uh, the dimensional analysis method or the ratio method either way should get you the answer you need. and I could ask you okay then how much stock do you put 20 ml okay what do I do next then I add 80 ml of water how do I know this because I want to make 100 ml of this stuff and this is what chemists do all day. Okay. Now, an addenda question. I'll raise this. Okay, Dr. Graz, an addenda question is, how do I make the stock? Let's some of this make some room. What if I were tasked to make this stock? How do I do that? Well, 50 gram, milligram per ml. Let's say I want to uh, make a stock. Okay, so I have to find the powder somewhere. Let's say I want to make 100 ml. Okay? Then I'm doing what? MLs cancel out. 100 uh, times 50, 5,000 or five grams, 5,000 milligrams equals five grams, right? So I take five grams of whatever powder and then it goes, and then uh, what, what do I do? I put it in what? 100 ml. And that will make me this concentration. And then from that stock solution, and stock solutions, you know, uh, we make stock solutions all the time because uh, you can't make every single dilution or every single concentration from scratch. It's a pain. It's easier just to have a stock solution and then, uh, then dilute it down whenever you need it. Okay? And remember, concentration means what? You're adding more powder or more drug. Dilution, you're either taking away drug or adding more solvent or water. All right? And that concludes our lecture. Kindly look at Moodle. Uh, there will be a homework assignment due um, not really a week or now because the priority should be your midterm items, um, your midterm corrections. Um, but there will also be other homework due. Um, I'll give it like 10 days or so. But look at Moodle for details. All right. Thank you very much. Or 300 cc's. Same thing. Now, if I look at the label, okay, the label tell me right there, it's a little bit fuzzy, that it's 7.5 milligrams for 500 ml. So this is how much drug that is in half a liter of this stuff. Okay? 7.5 milligram for 500 ml. And it is in 15 ml. That's the concentration, right? This is the dose, okay? Now, the prescription states that my patient is supposed to get 15 ml of this stuff. The prescription states the patient takes two teaspoons twice a day.
okay? These things in parentheses are the abbreviations because remember, some of the labels that we have, not some of the labels, almost all of them, um, uh, um, are in that, you know, that abbreviation mode. So teaspoons, BID. So I have to take two teaspoons of 15 cc's or 15 ml a day. So I'm taking two teaspoons per dose, okay? So, right off the bat, what do we know? And I'm not doing anything. Two teaspoons. How many, how many ml are in one teaspoon? Five. Five. So if I have two teaspoons, how many ml do I now have? Two. Uh, ten. Uh, two times five is? Good. Ten. ten. So we already know, right off the bat, that's ten ml. Ten ml. All right? Now, because if I take... 10 ml, and I take it two times a day. How much ml? How many? Uh, how much volume for a whole entire day am I taking? 20. 20. 20. Good. So could this be a multiple choice question? Yeah. A. 10, 20, 30, 40. How many do I take per dose? 10. How many am I taking per day? Dose is the one time. Right. How many are you taking uh, per day? 20 ml. Now, let's get into the tricky one. Okay. Let's say uh, I dispense 300 ml of it. Okay. It's a bottle of 300 ml. Okay. Now we already know. How many days supply is 300 ml? So I start off with 300 ml times. And how many do I want? Days. How many do I know? Do I use this conversion or this conversion? Ten. That's 20. per dose. I use. I want what? Day. Day. So I put what I know, day, right on the top, and ml would be on the bottom, and I use this conversion. So the 20 would be on the bottom, and that's the answer to your question before. Like, how do you know where to put it? Does it matter if it's on the top or the bottom? It does. Because now that I define day over ml, right, where does the ml go? The 20 goes where the ml goes. And day, one day, 300 divided by 20, or 30, divi uh, 30 divided by 2, how many days supply does my patient have? 15, which is a lot. It's probably, this, this is probably state of Virginia, why we're giving so much dose. That's because it's 30 days. 30 days in... No, 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 not No, no, no. Let, let, let's go, let's go over it. Let's start from the beginning again. Let's try it again. Okay. What did we figure out right here, even before we started? We figured out... Even before we started, this is what we figured out. Per... Per dose, you're dispensing how much? 10. 10 ml, because you know it's two teaspoons. But per day, you know the patient has to be hit what? Once in the morning, once at night. Twice a day. So that's what? 20. 20 ml. We're all agreed on how to figure this out. Okay? Those are your conversions, so you, you don't touch it. Right? This is on the side. Now, if you look at the question on page 140, it asks, how many doses will be dispensed if I gave my patient 300 ml? So, how do we do that? We start with what we know. What do we know? 300, 300 ml. Times. Then I put my conversion equals then my box of what I don't know and how many things how many doses I go um, uh, how many doses will be uh, dispensed or uh, well first it asks okay let's I two. oh how many doses let's do that one first so if I want how many doses which conversion will I use the 10, 10 ml per dose or the 20 ml per day 10 ml per Okay, so I put dose on the top because that's what I want to end up with, and I put ml on the bottom. Now you see 10 goes with this, with the ml, so I put that there. Dose one. Dose is of course one. 300 over 10, 30. right? Zero cancels out, so it's what? 30 doses. Okay. Now, my question was, how many days supply do I have? Well, we start off with what we know. 
300 ml times, and then I want to know how many days I have until she runs out, because she's got to come back. This is for pain, for a significant amount of pain. So she's got to come back. So I use this one, because it has days in ml. I put the ml on the bottom, days on the top, because that's what I want, and it's 20 ml per day. So 300 divided by 20, that's what? 15. So in a case where she has to take it four times a day, then it would be it, 40 ml well, per day. Well, uh, I wouldn't be given this much uh, uh, Tylenol. Just in case, because you know, sometimes in a book they put up crazy questions. Yeah, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't matter like if I changed any of the numbers. What the matters days, is, what, days, ma what matters is, did you get the process down? The days would change in that. Yeah, the answer days. of course will change. But yeah. let's say, for example, I don't want to do teaspoon. I, want, um, I don't want to do because usually with uh, pain medication of that level, we're usually what titrating down. You don't want to when you start increasing meds, you end up like uh, you know, like that doctor who took care of Michael Jackson. It's going to get out of hand. Um, you're always trying to, with pain medication, titrate down. You don't want the patient on extended, uh, extended pain medication. Because um, remember, your pain meds from your pharmacology is Schedule II drugs. Very, very high potential uh, for uh, addiction. And especially that stuff. Wow. Hydro uh, and also, remember what I told you. This is the real world. Do you think that a patient could be faking it to try to get drug off you? Yep. And that's why um, in other states, we don't give this much dose. We want, I want, if my patient is in this much pain, I want her to see me again in four, three, four days. Because I want the pain to start going down and then start taking her off this massive amount of drug. So in the situation I was talking about, we were talking about 300 ml times and we're looking for the days and they want them to take the medicine four times a day? Yeah, so let's, uh, let's do that. Let's say, for example, we're going to change up, uh, we're going to change up the, the, the problem. Would it be dose or day? So let's say, for example, we're gonna we're gonna change what? The day. She's in real pain. I want to take her four times a day. We already know that we're doing what? Uh, we're doing already 10 ml per dose. Now that she's got four four times a day, how many how many ml now? Forty. It'll be forty. Right now, how much supply does she have? Even less. So we do what? We do what we know. 300 ml times how many days we have. We put the ml on the bottom, put what we want on the top, the days. So one day she takes 40 ml. 300 divided by 40, 30, uh, 30 over 4. That's what? She's got enough for uh, seven, a little over seven days. A little over Saturdays? Yeah. What did I do wrong? 30, 30 ml. 300 divided by 40. 300. Because what's 40 times 7? Oh, 280, 40. right? Right. So let's, let's do it calculator wise. Calculator, 300 .5. divided by 4. Uh, yeah, she's got seven and a half days. A week and a week and half a day. A week and like the morning. So you can see, no matter what parameter I change, the process is always the same. Don't try to memorize what to put on the top, what to put on the bottom. Memor like memorize and learn the process. How, like, like, uh, like, how did we figure out these steps? Okay. Now, another question, since we're, you know we're kind of mixing, mixing and matching the review with uh, this lecture, is can I have this label? I can have this label out, right? I can ask you, how much is inside this bottle? And you'll tell me what? 300 ml. What is the concentration and you go, of this bottle? 7.5 .5 milligrams per 500 ml. That's the concentration. This stuff here is stuff that we figured out because we know from the problem that's stated on page 140 is that we gave two teaspoons. 
Why and if we're giving four times a day, it would no longer be BID, it will be Q. what? QID. Because two times a day is 